And welcome back. This is WVOF 88.5 FM in Fairfield, Connecticut. The Upper Room with Joe Kelly here. And we just heard a brand new song, which is from Silhouette of Me from Courtney C. Patty. And it's a new EP just released. We heard Wild Orchids right here. And uh, we're in for a real treat because uh, they've been special guests of ours before, performed right here on WVOF. And uh, currently, they're on tour. The Listen In Tour, right? The Listen In Tour. That's right. 2004, the East Coast Tour. And uh, we welcome back to WVOF in the Upper Room with Joe Kelly, Jennifer Yax, and Courtney C. Patty. So great to have you here again. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us back. So so you just got into town uh, a few days ago, right? Long Uh, flight? Seven hours, I guess? Yeah, a little longer than seven hours even. Yeah, we got in Tuesday, a few hours later than anticipated, but we arrived safely and in one piece, and so did our guitars. So we are we're oh, happy to be here. Well, yes. <laughs> now, do they allow you to bring the guitars on board? Oh, or that, was, that... that was one of our uh, little hiccups of Tuesday. You know, we've, we've never had to, to check our guitars before, and apparently um, the lovely airline whose name we will will omit to protect the innocent um, won't let us... Uh, wouldn't let us bring them on board because I guess they get fined or something. So, you know, Courtney and I are sitting there with, you know, thousands of dollars worth of instruments between us. <laughs> Not real happy about that. But it all worked out. They survived. They, they were survived. Little, they were a little right. chilly. They were a little oh, frozen. Oh, so you have to when check we, them in. Yeah, we yeah, had to right. gate check them. So. Wow. So that's a little nerve-wracking. Yeah, if we'd yeah. known that, we probably would have brought hard cases. <laughs> yeah, or right. bought an extra seat for them or something. I don't know, but... <laughs> right. So, so this tour, um, you know, I was looking over the itinerary on um, both your websites and, and the press release. Seems seems something pretty cool. I mean, a lot of musicians like to be in your shoes, I guess. Yeah, we've but, been really fortunate to to be able to look at so many college gigs, and we have a few club dates and some radio appearances, and uh, and even a, a folk concert and a songwriters conference. So we really had a nice balance of venues and and opportunities on this one and one of the most nerve-wracking things when you go on the road is being afraid that you're going to play someplace and no one's going to show up because you just it's hard to you know get people excited about a show when you're not in that town or in Mm -hmm. that place and this this is great because we have you know the college shows are great because it gives you an opportunity to to have a new audience and you know it's just not quite as stressful. That's right. nice. So they were, uh, you know, you're talking about new venues. Um, how, what are some of the ones you're really looking forward to that you haven't played that, that's here? I saw some New York dates coming up. Yeah, we haven't played at the Baggett Inn yet, and we'll be there uh, on the 22nd. Um, I'm particularly excited about the Mystic Folk uh, concert this weekend. It's a... It's an organization, Mystic River Folk, has been putting together a folk series of acoustic concerts, and um, and we're playing at an all women's one, uh, all indie girl actually. If if you're right. familiar with that, it's a group of performing female musicians. And uh, does and Holly so, Figueroa still run that? Or? She does yeah. still run right, that. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. her her mm-hmm. group. So all of the performers this Friday up in Mystic will be uh, will be performing indie girls. So that should be a, a good event. Is that for benefit? Or is it just a Yeah, it's a benefit yeah. for an organization called Lunch, and they are, a, um, a, I guess they provide shelter and food for homeless or poverty-stricken mm-hmm. families in that area. So I think half the, the proceeds from the concert go, go to that organization, which is, it's always great to be able to, to yeah. do something like that. Right. That's great, and I'm sure, you know, some great music. That's on, what date is that? It's on Friday night. Friday night, uh, okay. On the 16th up in Mystic at the at Union Baptist Church in downtown Mystic. And then uh, more locally down here is yeah. uh, Sono Caffeine, South yep. Norwalk, and the second go-round there, right? That's right, and we'll yeah. actually be joined this time by Donnie Lynette from New York City. She's going to come up. She's a great performer that Jen and I have both worked with on various coasts and places in between, so she'll be coming up to share that event with us, too. And that is located in downtown South Norwalk. I believe it's Washington 133 Street. Washington Street. Oh, you got Street. it. Wow. And you didn't even look at a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you put that a few times on your website, you remember right. it. <laughs> So, uh, you know, you can go to caffeinecoffee.com, and you're both the featured artists of the month over there. That's yeah, what I saw on their website We there. saw that, too, which is, we're just it's very thrilled. Exciting. Right. Yeah. So, so you're here, and uh, it's a great thing to have uh, guitars and great voices, and uh, we heard them getting ready, and they sounded great. So, um, it, 
you know, who, who's up first? Because I know you, you're both great singer songwriters. So I, I think either one of us is ready. We should we should flip a coin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Jen, Jen won the, uh, Jen won radio, the coin toss. radio coin toss. <laughs> okay, let's get the mic here. So so Jen's been uh, writing, I mean, I'm sure both of you write new material all the time. So do you have, are you playing a new one or something from uh, Um, album? Sure, I'll play a new one. Um, I wrote this song. Uh, my father-in-law, my I got married about six months ago, and my oh, congratulations! Uh, thank you. Yeah, my father-in-law has been a lifetime um, army guy, and he was in the reserves and got sent to to Iraq right after my husband and I got back from our honeymoon, and he's there now. And so I, you know, obviously it's been on on the on our brains a lot, and so this song was. Uh, inspired by by him, although not you know specifically about him. It's called Ten Thousand Miles. All right, that is live music right here at WVOF, and that is Jennifer Yaks and uh, newly composed song. And um, I'm sure you get a chance to hear that one in in concert maybe this this yeah. uh, next couple weeks, as uh, Jennifer Yaks and Courtney C. Patty are on tour right now, the Listen In Tour 2004. And, and you know when you got a, a title for a tour, it's, you're talking serious musicians. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. And that song was uh, inspired by your father-in-law, who, yeah. who's stationed over there now? Yeah, he's in Baghdad yeah. now. So, so you get correspondence, hopefully, all the time, right? You know, he uh, actually has a yeah. cell phone, which is pretty incredible. We get a call about once a week, and it's just crystal clear. It's amazing. That, wow. You know, yeah. So the name of that song is 10,000 Miles. 10,000 Miles, mm-hmm. okay. And we we should get uh, both ladies' uh, websites up there. You can uh, check out right now and do your homework, um, <laughs> and you can give them respectively where you can get your CDs. Uh, my website is jenyax.com, J-E-N-Y-A-X.com, and uh, there's a link to uh, to my website to CD Baby, which is a great uh, independent music e-tailer. Um, carries lots of great CDs and, and a couple of mine. And uh, my website is CourtneyCPatty.com. That's C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y-C-P-A-T-T-Y.com. And uh, I also link up to CD Baby. And actually, the newest CD uh, is is an EP, so it's, right. a, it's a short one. It's got four songs on it. And CD Baby is currently doing a, a $5 special. And so oh, okay. that uh, CD is actually available there for only $5 if you pick up another couple of five dollar cds and there's some there's some great cds in the the five dollar sale bin Bin, there so (laughs) let's talk about the new uh ep which is four new songs from courtney c patty and silhouette of me um when did you decide you know you want to get some new music but keep it as an ep and have something out it was pretty much strictly a financial consideration. Um, okay. As an independent artist, most of the time we end up fronting our own production costs, and those can be pretty steep. And uh, and I had some new material and wanted to get some new stuff out, but um, but the cost of doing an entire record was a little overwhelming, so we decided to do half a record instead. And uh, and I got to work with some great people. You know, we just took the the best of the new songs and and put those together. And and now we've got a shorty. There you go. Oh, that's the term for it. The shorty. They the got shorty. the shorty ready. <laughs> we got and, the, the the shorty CD. And and they'll have them all for sale at the at the upcoming shows. I'm sure. And yeah. Yeah. I remember you had the uh, the visa thing, right? We do. Yeah. We yeah. have the visa swiper. Swiper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they're they're traveling here. They're they're based out of the San Francisco area, and uh, you know. You also did some tours, I think, in the Southwest, right? Mm-hmm. Did, did a few things out there? Yeah, we were in the, the Phoenix metropolitan area last, early in 2003, and then we headed down to L.A. and did a few shows down there in July together, so that's it's been fun. Spent a, a good deal of time traveling together. Yes. Yeah. yes so. it, now, different regions in, in the U.S., is it different for singer-songwriters? Do, do you get that, or are you just... I think music. so. Yeah. I think uh, I think the kind of stuff that we do is is received really differently in different areas. And I've actually done um, a couple tours solo without without Jen, which is so lonely. Um, 
but I, I did a couple in the Northwest, and, and I found that to be a great region. Um, you know, Connecticut has been really fun for us. New York has been fun. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there are definitely places where people are more excited to hear acoustic music. And, and, and sometimes it's in the places where um, there's less of it, which is kind of nice. Like when you go to a, especially in a small town where uh, there's just not a lot of acoustic music coming through, it's really, it's really fun to... You know, people get really enthusiastic, and you know we both live in an, an area. The, the Bay Area is very, you know, vibrant musical place, and which is great in a lot of ways. But you know, there's a lot of people who do what we do, so it's it's really fun to go to a place where where that's not yeah. the case. Sometimes, like, like you teach them a lesson about you know, original music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, well, it's just yeah. it's just nice to to have an audience that's hungry for what you do, and right. the Bay Area is very saturated with acoustic musicians, so. For so, better or for worse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can uh, go to their websites we just mentioned. And, uh, you know, both musicians, uh, Jennifer and Courtney, are here uh, performing live. And they have great guitars and great voices. So uh, Jen won the coin toss. And now uh, Courtney C. Patty uh, is going to perform live. And uh, we're always looking forward. This is their second time in the studio. So. One day we'll release a box set of all the performances. There you go. Yeah, right? <laughs> Live on the Upper Room yeah, CD. Yeah, yeah. Why not? That'd be right. great. You should do that. You should get your artists that have been involved and yeah, put we, together a compilation. We got a lot of people request and stuff like that, so I I got to do the research on you know. We'll have to talk. Yeah, making sure people <laughs> have you know getting paid here. I, I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> so okay. Okay. So yeah, you're welcome to perform. Well, uh, why don't I play something uh, off the off the new Shorty CD? It's uh, it's the first track. It's called London Bridge. Song, a new song right there from Silhouette of May. That is Courtney C. Patty, accompanied by Jennifer Yax on backing vocals there. And you know, I, I don't know if you want me to work the sound for for the tour right there. I think I missed yeah. your first backing <laughs> vocals. I wasn't I, I wasn't aware you were gonna sing so but we got it things straight now. So. She's uh <laughs> she's on the EP as well. Yeah, right. So she uh she lent her voice to the project, yeah. which is great. It's yeah. better for it. Right. And you're both on each other's projects, which is really cool. How how did you first meet each other for for the listeners, you know, getting this for the first time? I'll let you tell the story this time. <laughs> yeah, we are both members of a songwriters organization called the West Coast Songwriters Organization, and uh, or association, I guess. Yeah, whatever. And uh, we, they have events every month, and and one of the events that they have is a competitive open mic, and mm -hmm. uh, we actually met when we were competing against each other. So uh, we. Uh, we had a good time that night and realized we were a fierce competition for each other and decided it would be better if we uh, joined forces rather than uh, worked against each other. And it's been it's been a good decision. Yes. Yeah, and then that makes it great on, on tour and, I mean, the support for each other. Because, you, you know, the first time I saw you play live, I could tell right away you were both getting into each other's songs. Uh, it was at the Borders uh, Bookshop. And, uh, yeah, that, that's nice. Yeah, it's definitely... Yeah. Um, you know, both for artistic and logistical reasons, it's it's so nice to to have a partner in crime. Right, and beats having to go in a city and trying to find somebody in some unknown city. Well, we've had already to on this tour a couple of, a couple of experiences where we we're like, you know, doing this by yourself would just not be so fun. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So, so are you traveling with uh, um, a mixing board too? Because last time you had. I yeah. Really have that too, yeah. Yeah, we have a, a small PA with us in right. the in the back seat of our rental car. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's it's nothing big, but it definitely does the trick. So, yeah. And, and the places uh, we should let our listeners know uh, this Sunday at the Sono Cafe, and I think they start at eight o'clock mm -hmm. there, right? Mm -hmm. Eight to, to eight to ten. Couple forty-five minute sets are around there. Yeah, I think yeah. we're actually going to do an because uh, we're going to be with Donnie Lynette, who's another singer songwriter. We're going to do a a sort of in the round oh, okay. thing and just sort of alternate alternate songs for the course of the evening, which should be really fun and maybe sing a little bit and play a little bit in each other's stuff. So that should be cool. Yeah, and uh, that's caffeinecoffee.com dot com and South Norwalk. So come down; it's a real chill vibe and laid back, and John Stewart doing a good job over there. Yes, he is. Yeah, and, he's doing uh, a great job. Yeah. Thanks, John. That's right, John. <laughs> also, um, you know, the Bag It In down in uh, Greenwich Village, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that on Bleecker Street? No, it's, no. well, it might be, cl it's on a, it's on West 3rd, 82 West 3rd, I think, which okay. I think is down there in the West Village, although 
I, despite the fact that I grew up an hour outside of Manhattan, right. I still struggle with figuring out where everything is. But right. and, <laughs> I'm just uh, amazed you know all the addresses of all the places we're playing. This is a real talent that I haven't yeah. seen before. <laughs> we could capitalize on this, Jen. Right. No, no. Well, it's real cool if you go to uh, uh, Jen's and Courtney's website. They have uh, journal live journals and you know i was on there and checking out and you already started documenting the tour which is pretty cool yeah yeah uh when, when do you find the time to do that um well i think we we found the time last night was when we sort of finally were able to sit down and relax and so just sort of anytime there's a quiet moment and you know it's nice you know we both have so many you know friends and family who are always curious to know what's going on when we're on the road and it's, sometimes it's hard to uh to get in touch with them all and let them know what's going on and so it's just sort of a fun way to to put stuff down and it's also fun i've gone back a couple times to read my own journals and you kind of relive the experience a little bit which is fun yeah and you can go there and and check it out and i'm sure there'll be more more words on the tour. Oh, I'm right? sure there will be yeah. more. <laughs> so you're going to be here on um, the both of you till May 2nd, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And uh so w- some other places you're doing the, the Mystic River Folk Conference, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Or is that a concert? It's it's a, it's a concert, concert. Right. and then we're also at the Connecticut uh songwriters and and performance concert or conference, conference. on Saturday. Um and we're showcasing there, I think at 3:15 Three, yeah. or something well, like that. What what happens at at those kind of conferences? What goes on? Um you know, we haven't been to the this one, this particular one, but generally they're an opportunity for songwriters to network with other writers and other industry professionals and get a chance to get your material critiqued. And um, and r- for me, I, I, you know, the ones I've attended, it's just been a great opportunity to meet other people that you can work with and, mm-hmm. and you know, develop a relationship with for the future. So let let me ask you this question um i was thinking about this the other day i mean a lot of songs that you both write a lot of intense lyrics and personal lyrics how do you remember all the all the words because you know groups go up there and you know don't have lyrics as deep as the both of you how, how do you keep it well, all together sometimes you don't <laughs> i was gonna say i i quite often forget my lyrics on stage uh-huh. <laughs> yeah um I don't know. I haven't had a whole lot of trouble, I guess, generally. One of the things, and I was telling Courtney the story last week, when I was in college, uh, Billy Joel was doing a, a sort of, uh, he was doing a concert tour that was kind of a lecture slash concert series where he was kind of talking about his songwriting. And he came to, to Cornell where I went to, to college and and I went to that show and he, when he started to play his songs and he like starts to, gets ready to play like one of his, I think it was like Just the Way You Are, one of his like big hits. And he just whips out this huge binder of charts of his songs. And somebody oh, okay. after the song raised their hand and was like, how can you not remember your songs? And he's like, hey, listen, you know, when you get to be my age, <laughs> you need all the help you can get. And I at the time thought it was totally ridiculous. But uh, there's times when I've, yeah. I've had trouble. At a certain yeah. point, your catalog gets pretty big. And, right. you know, obviously we both have so many more songs written than have been released. Mm-hmm. And for, for whatever reason, they either weren't strong enough at the time or, you know, they, they just may not get played as much as some of the more popular ones. <laughs> and so right. sometimes you go to, to kind of dust off one of those oldies. Or somebody and, requests uh, it. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Someone requests it and, uh, and you kind of have to pull it out of the closet and and sometimes not all the pieces come out of the closet and you kind of have to reassemble it on stage but um you know i i found that audiences you know it shows that you're human when you can't remember your own lyrics and usually everybody gets (laughs) a good laugh out of it and you you pick up where you stumbled and and you smile and and you go on and i mean that's kind of how life is not everything goes the way it's supposed to and you know, you have, you pick yourself up and you dust yourself off and you you laugh and you keep going. One so of the joys yeah. of live performance, right? <laughs> and, and also, like the anecdotes in between the the songs are, are it's really cool out of concerts like that both you do, yeah. So come yeah, out so to much, the shows, yeah. So much of what we do is based on you know very personal experiences, and so as much as we want people to get what what they hear out of our songs, sometimes it's fun to to share where they actually came from. And right. Right. Or depending on who's yeah. in the audience, sometimes not so right. fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, yeah, you work some tough crowds sometimes, I'm sure. Yeah, occasionally. Every once in a yeah. while. Right. A couple so, songs I leave out of the set when, you know, mom or dad's in the audience or oh, right. <laughs> something like that. But, you know, <laughs> there's a, yeah. a little bit of stage censorship going on there. <laughs> yeah. Spe- speaking of Billy Joel, I was amazed. I, I think I read, uh, did you read Rolling Stone, The 50 Greatest Artists? 
No. And Elton John wrote the tribute to Billy Joel, and he said, El- uh, Billy Joel hasn't written a song since 93. He hasn't. A new song. I just... Well, I know me, that he, yeah. yeah, I know he was kind of doing some of the classical, he did like yeah, a classical right. record. Right. And yeah, that's amazing because he's yeah. been so prolific. It's So I guess, you know, he's been doing other things. So, yeah. So uh, we, we've got uh, right in the studio here, Jennifer Yaks, jenyaks.com, CourtneyCPatty.com, Courtney, C-O-R-U-R-T-N-E-Y, CPatty.com, and uh, all their Music is available from there and also a direct link to cdbaby.com, which is, you know, a great place. I mean, we don't receive a dime from them, but we always seem to mention a lot of artists linking up with them. So They're just a very, um, very stand-up company. They're, they're very uh, attentive to their artists, and they're very honest about yeah, their business have, dealings. I mean, they have something like 60,000 artists selling their, independent artists selling their products on that site. And I don't know how they do it, but... Yeah. You know, you never have to wait to get paid. You never have to. I mean, they're just they're just fantastic, and it's almost it's a little amazing. So, so uh, both Jen and Courtney are here, and uh, they're raring to perform. I take it. So, <laughs> if you are, <laughs> um, who wants to go next? I guess. I guess it's Jen? my turn. Yeah. I guess I'll play my. Um, I grew up here in in Fairfield, Connecticut, and uh, wrote this song sort of about my experience driving the. I don't know, some of the windier, more interesting roads out here when I was in high school. It's funny, since you mentioned that, now when I go by that area, I think of that song. (laughs) (laughs) Every time you drive on Route 136, yeah. Yeah, right, right, (laughs) yep. Um, So this song's called Drive Again, and it's uh, it's on my CD. You're uh, not invincible. Yes. Right. So, uh, you know, you're both based out on on the West Coast, uh, San Francisco area, and uh, coming here... On tour, the Listen In Tour, uh, 2004, which is real cool and, you know, great promotional pictures of both of you. Oh, and And uh, how, how did you uh, link up? I know an organization's helped sponsor this or, or arrange it. I don't, know, I don't know the specifics, but I know, I know Prince SF or something like that. Prince SF is a booking agency out in San Francisco, and they do a lot of uh, artist promotion as well. And uh, we've worked with them on some specific gigs here and there in the past. And mm-hmm. they wanted to put together this listen-in tour and have it be an annual event. Um, we've been joking and calling it Baby Lilith. Um, okay. But basically <laughs> sort of a, an annual event featuring uh, emerging women in music. And because we had worked with them and, and already had a good rapport, they approached us about it. And, and we said, we're in, we'll do it. Um, yeah. So it's really been a collaborative effort between us and, and them and in putting it together because it's kind of the first run. But, um, but yeah, we've, we've got a great thing lined up with, with their help. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been really fun after, after doing so much of the, the tour planning all by ourselves to have some, to have some help with that because it's, um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I've always enjoyed the business side of, of being a singer-songwriter, but it's definitely... Always nice to have a hand. And have you ever had any close calls on, on missing a gig while traveling across the country? Well, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I wasn't convinced we were going to make it here on Tuesday. Um, just the weather was bad coming into JFK, and we, you know, got into our room at, at 2 a.m. that night, and we thought we'd probably get in around 10. Um, right. So, And apparently ours was one of the last flights it didn't end up being rerouted to Baltimore. So I, I suppose we had a close call just making it to our shows yesterday. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, I think we sort of, we both have, a, you know, the way we work is we just plan a lot of extra time in and hope for the best. And, you know, stuff happens on the road and, you know, you know things are going to go wrong. So luckily, you know, missing a, a gig hasn't been one of them yet. How, um, how about keeping the voice in, in, in good sound and condition? We're both pretty... Uh, conscious of our health Mm -hmm. um generally and i would say especially while we're traveling so we try really hard to eat well and to get enough rest and to take our vitamins and do all the things that your mom told you days when you feel a little more up to the task than others but you know again i've been really lucky um i think we've both been pretty lucky with with health on the road i actually was really sick right before we we went on this tour so i don't you know whatever and you get off the plane and and you're doing shows yeah. the next day that's you know <laughs> and, and pretty steady i mean i looked you have a few travel days but you know our schedule uh, is pretty ambitious this mm-hmm. time yeah right 
but you know, we left a couple of days for hoping to get into the the city and do a little, maybe see a show or do some, do something fun. Do something fun and New Yorkish. Maybe right, go to Hershey right. Park in Pennsylvania while we're there or something. You know. Oh, something you're going to be fun. right around there. Um. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think so. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's kind of close, you know, right. in the Northeast. How far away could we be? <laughs> yeah. How, how How about this uh, upcoming summer? What do you have planned? Uh, what are you looking to do? Uh, you know, I think we've been so focused on getting this particular project together, this tour together, mm -hmm. that we haven't spent a whole lot of time looking at the summer. We do have a few, uh, you know, a lot of festivals and fairs come through the Bay Area. I'm, I'm sure they do everywhere. Art and I mean, wine we've got festivals. A few of those things lined up so far, which, which are always great. Um, summer is also filled with weddings, which has right. a tendency to keep um, gals like us busy. Yeah. Oh, so. you play a lot of winnings, too. Yeah. 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 I'll be yeah, playing DJ one when we get back. Too. Oh, yeah. 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 So I probably take business away from you sometimes. <laughs> but I uh, know I'm not that I heavily think, involved. I think it. we <laughs> fill different roles in a wedding. Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. So um, I think it's actually cool when, like, they have DJs and band live musicians together. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So. So uh, their upcoming shows are, uh, we, we should give the rundown. Whoever. There's Andre. See, the guy in the middle studio, he, he'd be a good guy to go on his show, too. He does a Tuesday show. Ah, well, yeah. hello, Andre. He supports, yeah, live music. <laughs> I don't think he can hear us, but... Um, That's okay. We'll still say hi. Hi, That's Andre. Right. <laughs> but uh, you'll be uh, performing right here in South Norwalk, Connecticut, on Sunday, April 18th, mm -hmm. 8 to 10 p.m., and uh, come down. It's the second time at uh, Sono Caffeine, caffeinecoffee.com. Stop by and... And bring some extra money because it's definitely affordably priced there and great uh, vibe. Mystic uh, coming up. There's a concert, which is Friday, tomorrow. Friday night. Yeah, that is tomorrow. Look right. at how quickly that happened. And uh, <laughs> the website for that is mysticriverfolk.org. Um, so you can find out more information there or through jenyaks.com or courtneycpatty.com. It's all linked up on our sites. And also uh, the Bag It In. W what's the date for the Bag It In? That's Thursday, uh, the 22nd. And okay. we'll be there from 7 to 9, again doing an In The Round uh, performance, I think, with Donnie Lynette's again. And maybe maybe one other uh, singer-songwriter. Okay. Um, and then I guess next week in between we're going to be in Pennsylvania um, and New York State at some colleges um, along the way. Um, so definitely check our websites. Um, you know, most of the shows are open to the public, and the websites will indicate whether or not they are. And a lot of them are free. Um, so if you if you happen to live near, a, you know, one of the places we're playing, or want to make a road trip in the nice yeah, spring weather, like you know. two three hours. Yeah, tops I, we away do. We mapped out everything, and I don't. We have one day when I think we have to drive. We kind of get out there in New York and have maybe a seven and a half hour drive one day, but that's sort of the yeah. everything of else it. is pretty close. Right. What do you listen to in in the, the rental car? We don't have a CD player, so we've oh. been uh, we've been listening to radio. We've been contemplating borrowing some of my dad's, you know, nineteen eighties cassettes, but we haven't gotten that desperate yet. Because <laughs> I know there are. Yeah, I used to drive to Montreal all the time, and there's some stations where it's tough to find anything good. Yeah, up there. but you know, you know, one of the things, you know, there's no. Um, top 40 radio stations in San Francisco, which, you know, some people probably think that's a great thing, but I always think it's fun when I get out here, I turn on like Z100 or WPLJ and I get right. all excited to listen to the, you know, whatever the hits of the day are because right. I'm often quite clueless as to what they are. So that's always kind of fun, but. <laughs> you, you get a thrill when you hear your own music on the radio? I'm sure it's a big thrill. I, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the the first time it happened to me, I I probably nearly caused a car accident. I was it was uh, in Phoenix was the first time I actually heard my own stuff, and it was promoting a festival I was playing at, and it was it was one of the major stations down there, and and there I was, and they were announcing my name, and and uh, you know I I think I nearly hit the roof of my car, and probably nearly hit a few other people in the process, but. Um, I think the first time it's just so thrilling, and then then after that, it's of course it's exciting, but right. um, but I think it becomes it's not so weird. Yeah, yeah I think it right. becomes less. You know, you get used yeah. to it. But you're not changing the channel though. Well, while you're hearing your own song. Well, you know, uh, sometimes I mean I already know what my stuff sounds right. like, so I might as well listen to something else that right. I'm not as familiar with. <laughs> That's very true. Right. 
So uh, Jen and, and Courtney are both here here on WVOF and the Upper Room with Joe Kelly. Uh, if you're listening on UpperRoomWithJoeKelly.com, uh, thanks so much, and also WVOF.org. So um, let's see, Courtney, do you do you want to perform? Sure. Um, I guess we're we're rotating the great great uh, artists here. We're taking so. turns here. Right. Um, well, I'm, I think I'm going to play one from my last record. Okay. Um, and uh, it's actually going to be the title cut, which which I believe I did here about a year and a half ago when I was on your show last. That's right, um, back in November. And yeah, uh, we've, we've worked the arrangement a little bit with with Jennifer here, so it'll be a little different experience than last time. And uh, this is called I Am. But I fall for outlaws And I am a lion with a quiet roar I am a goddess, a trip on feet of clay I am a phoenix, scared of wings of flame And hey, oh, I am what I am And hey, oh, I am of that is probably influenced by the, the kind of music we've listened to and in getting to where we are and yeah fortunately so it, our styles are complementary right. so. so so what kind of music what was it growing up listening to oh growing up i <laughs> i grew up in a very broadway musical oriented family um but that doesn't you know necessarily really influence the way i write which i think is probably a good thing <laughs> right. but um, you know, now I probably say the songwriter who's been the most, or the, you know, one of the people who really inspired me to start writing was Sarah McLachlan. Mm -hmm. Um, and just, you know, the things that she did sort of encouraging women to, you know, the Lilith Fair was such a great opportunity for women singer songwriters to really sort of blossom. And so I listened to a lot of that. I mean, I listened to everything, but, um, in terms of what influences my writing, um, you know, she does and a lot of independent artists like Jonathan Brooke and Patty Griffin, who's a, a great Nashville artist who writes for a lot of other people as well as for herself. So I really find myself influenced by people like that. Right. So how about Courtney? 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm like Jen. I have very broad tastes. I, I actually come from a classical background. There was a, a stint in my life where I actually worked as a professional classical uh, vocalist. So, you know, I have, I have those influences. Um, we were talking in the car on the way over here about how U2 is probably one of the greatest bands mm -hmm. of all time, if not ever, in our opinions. And, and just, you know, but my probably most immediate influences are other female singer-songwriters. Um, in my case... Uh, it's it's the Ani DeFrancos, uh, the Sean Colvin, um, you know, a little bit of Joni in there. Um, you know, there, there are so many Indigo Girls. There's so many fabulous female mm -hmm. uh, artists out there. It's it's inspiring to somebody who's you know who's starting out and and who's sort of a fledgling in the industry to to have so many strong examples at this point. I think we're really fortunate. You know, ten years ago oh, there were yeah. not this many strong female artists um in the industry right. so that's uh, and i think i think lilith and sarah really uh really opened up the doors to to women in music in a it's lot of ways it's not such a weird thing anymore it's you know not an no do, do they still do live affair or, or no it's on hold right she stopped doing that after three years i think she said that she thought that that was kind of as far as she could she felt she could take it she didn't want it to get repetitive but i know there's a tour out now a lot of people are sort of comparing it being sort of the you know, R&B or, you know, Pop Lilith, which is, I think, like, Beyonce and, I don't Missy know, a couple Elliot, other people. I, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. That right. tour is kind of being, I mean, but that's the sort of thing that I don't think you would have seen happen, you know, 10 years ago, which is kind of cool, so. Yeah, I think they sold out Madison stuff. Square Garden, I think. Oh, that's great. Yeah, doesn't, that doesn't surprise yeah. me. So, uh, you know, things are, are going well in that respect. How, how about, have you seen things change since when you first started putting out your re releases and you know is it any easier or are there some more obstacles the music industry as a as a whole tends to be or, or seems to really has really been going through a lot of, of big changes and i think it's kind of hard to to say at this point what is you know i mean it gets kind of easier in some respects as you as you go on in your career because you just learn more about, you know, how you can personally be successful. Um, it's really interesting to me to see how, um, you know, digital distribution and kind of the whole way that people listen to music is changing and will affect people. Um, I mean, I think good music is still, is always going to be good music, so that will never change. But, um, you know, you know, I think growing up when I wanted to be a musician, I always thought my goal would be to, you know, have a record contract and be on the radio. And right, now, you know, yeah. those aren't, you know, necessarily the things that, you know, can make you be a successful, viable musician. And Unless you bring a suitcase full of money, right? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Courtney's worked in the industry, so she probably has more to say about it than I do. <laughs> you know, I, I, would, uh, I, I would agree with that. I, I think to a, a large extent, being in this industry is like being in anything else. And, of course, it gets easier over time because you meet more people and you develop your craft and your trade and, and you just understand more about what you're doing and and develop more tools to, to do that effectively and convincingly. And, um, and so I think to, to a great extent, things have gotten easier, um, just because you develop. Um, I think, I think it is a turbulent time for the music industry. And I think, you know, everybody recognizes that. I think the outcome of that has yet to really be determined. And I think, you know, as, uh, as an observer and as a former corporate member of the the music industry I'm, I'm very curious to see how that shakes out as an artist you know I really want to have my finger on the pulse of that so hopefully I can jump one step ahead of that when that happens um, so you know and I don't know that I've come to any conclusions I don't think anybody can can really say they have but it is definitely a turbulent time in the business so so we'll do a follow-up in a year and a half on this right, this, this topic, <laughs> right? yeah so, uh, you know, Courtney C. Patty is here as well as Jen Yax, Jennifer Yax, jenyax.com and CourtneyCPatty.com. And both artists have been kind enough to come in and play uh, live right here. And uh, they're on tour, the Listen In 2004 tour, Baby Lilith, uh, in, <laughs> in the subtitles there. So, uh <laughs> Jen, Jen's ready to perform again. So sure, sure. What's coming up? Um, I'm going to play Tipsy, which okay. is uh, one of the songs off my record. Um, it's a love song. And yeah, that's how it goes. All right. Sounding great right there from Jennifer Yax's CD, My Turn. That's Tipsy. And by the way, uh, I guess most of the songs so far, uh, both artists have been 
backing each other on vocals and trading verses on some of the songs. So, so that's real nice. Yeah, it's fun yeah. for us too. More fun, yeah. Right. Sometimes it's more fun to sing somebody else's stuff for a while because you've sung your own so many times. Yeah, even I think <laughs> one of the songs you called me by surprise. I was listening, and I'm like, "Whoa, the voice hey. changed right here." <laughs> I better, I better look up and make sure I have the mic ready for that one. Well, yeah. and Courtney and I have been playing together for so long. It's like I know I have her songs of mine that are my favorites, and I think it's, you know, the same for her. And it's kind of like, ooh, 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 right, I can right. sing, like, my favorite song. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Now, now uh, on a few of the dates, you'll be having uh, another performer with you. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what's the name again? Her name is Donnie Lynette. Okay. Uh, and she is... Uh, just just a great gal. I She used to live out in San Francisco. I did a few shows okay. with her out there and um, have worked with her uh, on various tours in the Northwest. And Jen's worked with her when she's been out in uh, San Francisco. And so this time we're, we're out here. And so she's going to join us for a few shows. And, uh, you know, another very talented, independent female singer-songwriter to join forces with. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Sono Caffeine, uh, which is Sunday night. April yeah. 18th, uh, get there at 8 o'clock and uh, roll to about 10 o'clock. Yeah, and, eat some uh, good food. Yeah, and coffee. And, it's, yeah. It is one of the cutest places we've played, Everything's too. for sale in there. The first yeah. time we're in there, we marveled. Everything has a tag hanging from it. Like, Yeah, the there's a, like a painting of a guy who looks like a old pope or something like Even that. Even when you go That's in the bathroom, there, you're yeah. like, oh. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you're looking for artwork or home furnishings, come on by because you can <laughs> right. hear great music and uh, finish Bye, your thanks. decorating projects. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And now they have a, a parking garage down there, which makes oh, it do. easy for people. Yeah, so. Yeah, no, it's it's a great venue to hear live music in. It's comfortable. It's got a great atmosphere, great vibe. It's going to be three great performers. If you like acoustic music, it's it's not to be missed. So right. come on down. So so the places here, uh, no more smoking in clubs. So. Yeah. How, how about on the West Coast? No smoking. No, either, anywhere right? in California. Yeah. You can't smoke in restaurants or clubs. Or... It's, it's been that way for years. Yeah. Right. So, um, but I couldn't believe. In, is it that way in Connecticut too or is it just I New th- York? I think, you know, I was at a club on Amber Jacks on Saturday night, and people were smoking outside, so maybe it is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, I, I couldn't believe that when I heard that, that they'd done that in New York. It's. Yeah. Astounding. I have a lot of friends who smoke, so so I definitely, you know, understand their point of view and their argument. But let me tell you, as a non smoking performer, so it nice. is so much yeah. more comfortable to yeah, play right. in, in an environment that's smoke free. Um, it's just a much, much easier performance experience for for us. It gets pretty pretty tough when people are lighting up in the front row. Because I feel sometimes like that. You come home and you're not a smoker. I mean, I don't drink, but uh, if you're in a heavily smoked place, you feel almost semi hungover the mm-hmm. the next yeah. day. I'm, I mean, there's got to be places you play that are tough. Yeah, to sing, it's just right? you know. And I remember the first time I came back to visit the East Coast after moving to California. It's like you get so used to going out and you don't smell like smoke when you come home. And right. the first time I came home, I was like, oh, I forgot that you can't. Like you get it, you smell it in your hair, in the shower, and you take right. off. You know. I'd never really thought about it before, but you get kind of spoiled. Yeah. I guess people get used to it here. I mean, yeah. they were kicking and screaming. I think they kind of worked it into restaurants here were the last thing. If Yeah. But, hey, it's great for artists, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can certainly un- understand the frustrations and the other point of view, but, um, but you know, we won't, we won't mince words and say that we're thrilled about it. So Right. So uh, you can go to both our artists' uh websites right here courtneycpatty.com and jenyaks.com there's pictures and journals the tour diary both of them have their words up there and you know check it out that's always nice to see because you know i followed some our other artists journals and it's all you know it's interesting yeah I, I didn't realize that people actually read them until I would get, you know, an email from a fan here or there yeah. on various tours encouraging me if I'd written a discouraged journal entry or, or um, laughing about something that I'd written and telling them how it amused them. And um, and it's really, it's nice to know that people are interested and that they do take the time. And it's even that much nicer to, to hear from people while you're kind of on the road and a little bit disconnected from your day-to-day routine to to get a kind word from someone you weren't expecting it from. It's it's great. I remember last time we were on tour, we discovered um, Diet Vanilla Coke <laughs> and how much oh, we loved it. Right. We loved and, Diet Vanilla Coke. And then a few months later, Courtney and I played a show together, and one of her fans came to the show and brought her a six-pack of Diet Vanilla Coke. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> it was just so cute. Yeah, so it's, you know. So you have some for the road? 
You know, we don't. I was just yeah. thinking we should stop and pick some up today. Mm-hmm. 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 How about the chai tea? To get oh, Barney oh, loves the chai. I love the yeah. chai tea. I, I, I didn't know what that was about in Borders a few weeks ago. Wow. I was like, it's good. Where, yeah. Oh. Where was the stuff? I should have had it a long time ago. It's good stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, where are some places in the U.S. You, you'd like to branch out and do some shows? You know, I, I haven't done the Midwest thing, and I would really love to do, uh, you know, the upper Midwest and, and also the Southwest. So those mm-hmm. those uh, two corridors have kind of been totally missed. We've we've kind of focused on the coasts and, and sort of working our way in, yeah. but we haven't really gone too far too far in the middle so that would be nice to do i'd like to tour hawaii as well yeah um, right. <laughs> and i'll expense this paid trip to hawaii please yeah I'll, right. uh, I'll be doing beachside you know unplugged performances no i don't know hey why not yeah, I, yeah. it would be great I mean, a dream. <laughs> yeah i mean this spring this is a nice tour i mean yeah do you like to keep it like that two to three weeks a tour, or, or you, yeah, you'd I've rather never, go. I've never done that? one any longer, so I don't. I don't know. I I can't imagine it getting comfortably too much longer than that. And even here, it's nice because my family all lives here, so we sort of have a home base, and that makes it a little less stressful. I don't know. I I think um, I think you know two to three weeks is a very manageable time to do a short tour. I, I it's. Touring is, is so much fun, and it's such a great experience, but it's also, um, you know, it's it's pretty intense um, mm-hmm. and requires a lot of logistical thinking just, you know, to get from point A to B every day. And if you're driving a couple hundred miles and playing a show that night and sleeping on somebody's couch, it, it gets really exhausting. And, um, you know, in this case, it, it works out really nice. We, we have shorter drives, and, you know, we kind of have a home base here, and um, and that makes all the difference in the world. But, you know, neither one of us has ever done a marathon, like, three- or four-month tour. But, uh, you know, this time frame just seems very manageable. You can really go to a region, you can do some shows, and then you can kind of, you know, get yourself back together and in a routine again and, and tackle the next one. So I think for the time being, this is... The Definitely next. the <laughs> right. the way to go for us. And it's the Listen In 2004 tour. Jennifer Yaks and Courtney C. Patty. Uh, all the dates are right up on both of their websites. And check them out. And if you can make it out to the show, definitely do so. And come down and support independent original music. Um, bring some money. You know, <laughs> We can't tell you exactly how much it's going to cost you, but it's <clears throat> affordably priced. They've got all their CDs for sale at, at the uh, shows. And... You know, Courtney has a new CD called "Silhouette of Me," the shorty. I gotta the get shorty. hip. Yeah, I gotta get hip you with the, the lingo here. Should just called it the shorty. I the shorty. Just, <laughs> I keep calling it my EP, and people keep asking me what an EP is. And then I go through this. You know, well, it stands. It's short for extended play, as opposed to long play, which is you know when you buy right. a CD, you're buying an an LP, a long play, and an extended play just means it's not quite as long as a long play, but not quite as short as a short play. And it's a short CD. Yeah, right, <laughs> you always right, end right, up saying, right. yeah. yeah, it's got four songs, people. Four right. songs. So, so uh, you want to play something from it? I would you love know? to. Okay, sure. Yeah, um, yeah. I, it's it's a gorgeous day here in Connecticut, but it's been uh, it's been raining on us for the past two days, and it's right. April. So, uh, I think the appropriate one to play next would be April Shower. And uh, incidentally, this is also where the title of the record came from, or title of the the short CD came from. So you can keep an ear out for that and see if see if you discover where that is. Okay. So our listeners uh, have really been treated thus far from uh, two great artists, incredible artists, Courtney C. Patty and Jennifer Yaks. And uh, that is from Courtney C. Patty's new shorty, the extended play, all those terms. And um, that is April Shower. And I saw you're playing piano on the CD as well, right? I do play piano on the CD. Uh-huh. So yeah. so uh, do, you, do you play it a lot? I, uh, I actually started with piano. It's my first oh, okay. instrument and, uh-huh. uh, and you know, played keyboards with bands when I was younger and realized that these guys were walking in with a guitar slung over their shoulder and here I was lugging this heavy thing and these stands and, um, and so I picked up guitar as a matter of convenience and, and somehow it sort of became my, my first love, but I'm hoping to kind of return to, uh, to a little bit more of the piano stuff and, and rediscovering that in a new way. So that was my my first attempt at doing so. 
so you both play great acoustic guitar. Do you, do you ever dabble with the electric guitar or just stick primarily to acoustic? I, I never have. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think I picked up an electric guitar once in a recording session to... And it was just a disaster. So I don't know. I know Courtney used to have Courtney used to have a pretty pink electric guitar. I used to have a Pepto Bismol pink Fender Strat, um, which unfortunately I had to had to sell when I was in a bit of a financial jam. But um, <laughs> but you know I I have dabbled with the electric guitar and it's a, it's a great instrument. But there's just something about um, there's something about the sound of an acoustic guitar and feeling it resonate against your body as you're mm-hmm. playing it. And there's just something that's, um, it's so much more of an experience for me to play an acoustic guitar as it is to play an electric guitar. And it's just, it's something that you, you do, but you also feel. And, um, yeah, it, this is, I'm just most passionate about, about right. acoustic. Um, so, so I kind we, of, kind of abandoned my electric, you know, exploration at that time. <laughs> So, so we got to give the plug in for uh, the, the guitars, Kelvin.com. Yes. Yeah. Big thanks to uh, to Kelvin and and Santa Cruz Guitar Company. Um, Kelvin uh, is deals exclusively in Santa Cruz guitars and is actually a, a part owner of the company. And um, you know, I endorse their instruments, and and he uh, and his company, Kelvin Guitars, sponsored our tour and uh, really helped to make this possible. So. Big shout out to yeah. to them. You can check them out at Kelvin.com. And Courtney does have a beautiful, uh, brand new, uh, custom made Santa Cruz guitar that she's that's traveling for the first time this time. And I it just is. I can't take my eyes off. It's a beautiful Koa yeah, it's wood got guitar a design and, right there. Yeah, and it's got her. They did a beautiful job with this guitar. It's just it's just incredible. I'm taking good care of her, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> right, right. I was uh, oh, right. okay. I was, when they handed over the guitar, they uh, gave me very explicit instructions to take very good care of it. So she's traveling with her humidifier, and I, I'm I'm taking good care of her. I'm a good guitar mom. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the uh, the piece right behind there? Is that the tuner? Oh yeah, this is uh Jen and I both have these little clip-on tuners that uh, that attach to the headstock of the guitar, and that way we can. Uh, turn them on and kind of look at them and actually check pitch while we're on stage and as we're playing without having to Unplug to route it through again, yeah. route it through any boxes on the floor keeps our stage floor a little cleaner and right. allows us to still get the information we need to make sure we, <laughs> to we sound not, good out there <laughs> not explode yeah. people's eardrums with our out of tune guitars. So, so uh, both artists right here who have stopped by the studio, Courtney C. Patty, uh, Silhouette of Me is the new. Uh, EP, four new songs, and you can go to her website, CourtneyCPatty.com, and also CDBaby.com. There's links from both their sites. And Jennifer Yaks, her website is JenYaks.com. And uh, definitely pick up My Turn as well, and pick up Courtney's uh, I Am CD. Pick up everything. Pick Any, it all anything they have, up. You know, and, and uh, they're on the Listen In 2004 Spring Tour, uh, which started up uh, a couple days ago in <laughs> Connecticut. And uh, they made it to Danielson, right? Was that? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, Danielson. And then we stayed in Pomfret. And yeah, we you got had a nice a radio... breakfast, right? Yeah, we, had, yeah, a be- right. we had a bed and breakfast. It was really great. The Cobscroft Inn was fantastic. We just wish we could have slept there for more than four hours. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah right, right. <laughs> but it was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you had a morning gig, right? Was it? Or... We did. We had a, a morning radio appearance up there. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, and we had gotten in late. So it was just a quick turnaround time that first day. But... We are. Uh, we made we it for a, it last night. We got a good night's sleep last night. We both woke up this morning feeling refreshed and ready to go. So we it's are almost this afternoon. But. Yeah, right. <laughs> we are. We are officially adjusted and feeling yeah. human again, and couldn't be happier to be here yeah. today. Thank you, Joe, no, for having welcome. us. Thanks, and yeah, listeners, it great. tell yeah. your friends. Yeah. Joe Kelly is one of the the greatest guys we know, and has a great thing going on here. He's a fabulous supporter of independent music. So if you haven't told all your friends about his show, then do it now. Wow, I gotta, right I gotta take that clip and put it at the beginning of my <laughs> show right there. But thank, thanks for all the words and, and support of our show. And, um, you know, let's give the, the rundown that we can off the top of our heads. Uh, the next show is Friday night in Mystic, Connecticut. Yeah, at the Union Baptist Church in downtown Mystic, the Mystic River Folk Concert Series. Uh, and then Saturday is the Connecticut uh, Songwriters Conference. 
which is being held at Three Rivers College, College in Norwich, Connecticut. Okay. And Sunday, of course, is uh, Sono Caffeine on Washington Street in uh, downtown South Norwalk. It's from 8 to 10. Travel day on Monday, right? Yeah. And Somewhere in Pennsylvania. We're going to be at Westchester University <laughs> in Westchester, Pennsylvania on Tuesday at 530. Mm-hmm. And What's Wednesday is... Oh. You got the bag in Thursday. Boy, Wednesday the twenty. We don't have anything. Oh, Delaware Valley College in Delaware, Delaware Valley. Valley, Pennsylvania. There you go. Yeah. And after that, it just starts to. Yeah. Well, it's check our good. websites yeah, because right. we really don't know. We check yeah. our own website to see yeah. uh, see what the next location is. So. Yeah. So uh, CourtneyCPatty dot com and JenYaks dot com, and send them uh, send them an email. Come out to the shows and. Uh, Support them at the shows and, you know. Read about our tour misadventures on our, yeah, that's I'm sure right. there'll be more right, right. mishaps. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll see you definitely Sunday night at the Sono Caffeine. That'll and, be great. Yeah, and uh, everybody, hope you can check them out. And if you just tuned in right now, uh, this interview will be airing, you know, actually it airs about six times a day. Because oh, we're on great. 24 hours on the other network. So, uh, you know. You can have 24 just, hours of the listening tour. Yeah, just just stick in uh, right here for uh, Courtney C. Patty and Jen Yaks, Jennifer Yaks, and uh, the listening tour preview. They're here, right here on tour. So thanks so much once again. Thank you, oh, Joe. Thank you for We're, your support. Yeah, Joe. you're welcome. And we're going to listen now to some more music from Jennifer Yaks and Courtney C. Patty right here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOX.